Hello everyone. In this episode, we're going to look at growth diagnostics. This is a special approach that looks for the country's most binding constraints on investment and hence economic growth. So the very special focus here is indeed on an economy's relatively too low rates of investment and degrees of associated entrepreneurial activities. And so the notion here is to associate this with the idea that no one size fits all in development policy. In chapter three, we saw four different classic approaches to thinking about one general approach, and we discovered that they don't apply everywhere, even though we get significant insights from all of them. And so this takes into account many of the ideas of the different schools we've looked at so far, including some of the new contemporary models that are discussed in chapter four. But you need very careful research to determine what is the most likely binding constraint, even for this more focused problem of looking at constraints on investment in entrepreneurship. The authors look at a decision tree approach in order to determine what is the likely most binding constraint on, on increasing private investment in entrepreneurship again. And so they divide the possible causes for this into two parts. One is a low return to economic activity specifically, and the other is problems in financing it, high costs of finance. So the costs of finance can be, in their analysis, from two sources. One is international and one is domestic. So inability of the economy to bring in foreign investment, be able to borrow on foreign markets, um, is something that might be addressed with policy. It may be the result of poor policies. There's also possible problems of bad local finance such as low savings or poor financial intermediation. Banks and other financial intermediaries that don't do a very good job of getting resources available from the savers who have the money to the borrowers who have productive uses for it. And these can be seen as related to our growth models that we examined in chapter three also. For example, in the Harriet Domar model, or AK model, we saw that low savings was proportional to low growth, that savings was, was proportional to uh, growth. And the i core C, the efficiency with which capital investment is translated into growth, is associated with poor entrepreneurship improvement in the banking system. So if these are binding constraints, encouraging higher rates of uh, savings, figuring out what's holding back savings, and improving intermediation could be key policies then that we might want to focus on. On the other side, the real side if you want of the economy, not that the financial side is not real, but the problem could also be low direct return with respect to um, different economic activities. And the authors very reasonably divide this into two general areas as the tree begins to branch out further. One is that there are inherently low social returns. The other, as we'll see, is low appropriability. So with respect to low social returns, we see that the authors have identified three general areas that were distinct and they thought foundational. One is poor geography and failure to address poor geography, failure to improve a malarial environment or failure to find some way around constraints imposed by being in a mountainous area. Another possibility is bad infrastructure, that that might be the constraint, whether it be um, roads that are highly congested and not sufficient um, or ports and so on. And the third area could be low human capital, which can include, of course, education and skills, as well as, well as uh, health and some other areas. So any of these three might be the binding constraint holding back higher levels of investment. And then um, there's also this low appropriability, and this falls into two categories, government failures and market failures, according to this decision tree. 
With respect to government failures, the authors for their final boxes here set out micro risks and macro risks as the two of key interests. And so with respect to micro risks, we see here problems of poor institutions that we've been examining since chapter two, certainly. Um, so here, property rights may not be uh, sufficiently strong to safely invest. So this may be holding back investments, um, certainly. Um, corruption, demand, you know, the ability to demand bribes, for example, this can cut into the return on investment quite uh, clearly. And so that as a result, this could be a binding constraint. And finally, taxes, not the existence of taxes, but taxes that are so high as to be confiscatory. That is to say, um, leave far too little room you know, for, any comp for a firm to, to possibly be profitable. Have to keep taxes in some reasonable degree. And right. So with respect to um, the low appropriability um, through government failures, we have also the macro risks, and this can include financial instability, failure to get uh, policies in uh, place to uh, prevent onslaught, uh, you know, the onslaught of uh, financial um, um, market crises, um, monetary um, policy problems, failure to get inflation under control, for example, fiscal instability. So that um, these are a set of areas that could be the binding constraint on growth. In addition to government failures, market failures can be of special importance. And remember, there's lots of possible market failures, some of them at the micro level. Here, looking economy-wide, the focus is on the kinds of market failures that can have um, economy-wide large implications for possibilities of growth and development. And so um, one set of these has to do with information externalities, and we've just talked about these in the self-discovery framework. Another has to do with coordination externalities, and this is something that we, have, of course, have been addressing with respect to the first parts of Chapter 4, the possibility that a big push is needed because of pecuniary externalities, the possibility that policy is needed to encourage investment because of strong complementarities, such as seen in the O-ring example. So I'm going to turn in our next episode to look at how policies might go from this framework to try to determine the most binding constraint. Thanks.